Hello YouTube, this is a brand new tutorial series uh, that I'm introducing to the channel. It's going to cover how to make a chess engine from scratch, how to make a feed-forward neural network AI to play moves on the chessboard from scratch. Uh, it's going to be trained, this model will be trained through a genetic algorithm, so we're going to have different instances of the neural network playing chess against each other and the fittest, most, the best chess AI's genes will be passed on through an evolutionary computing algorithm. And uh, we're going to have a UI and an entire chess engine from scratch in Java. Altogether, this project took me two or three months to figure out how to do, how to connect all these different ideas. And I'm going to be going through the, uh, and we're going to be remaking this project line by line every line of code will be documented and uh, commented. Well, not commented, but I'll be narrating on every single line. And you can always ask questions about any, any of the lines that uh, were ideas that were confusing you. As you can see in this demonstration, there's a lot of different options uh, for these menus, more than we even need to play chess. A lot of these options are just for <clears throat> uh, development purposes, like this edit genes window lets you be able to customize the the DNA to the the current models that are in the game. This demonstration is running some untrained or some partially trained models. They still need to be uh, trained more, but it takes a long time to train this neural network because it has like I don't know I think twenty hidden layers. Uh, so so it takes a long time to train. Uh, but you can edit the different weights and biases. That's essentially what is being rendered in that dialog box uh, with white traits encoded. Uh, the other menu is just a move list. We're going to be documenting chess games in the form of portable game network or a PGN. It's a standard uh, chess notation and also a file format for saving chess games. We're going to also uh, have a little bit of data visualization. Maybe we won't touch on that too much, but this is a different way to visualize and conceptualize a chessboard with uh, color-coded data. And uh, then we have the, the main chessboard that uh, we'll get to, but we'll probably have a console output for a while uh, and focus more on the logic of the chessboard rather than rendering it, because I think, I think uh, a lot of people already know how to put together UI, uh, but we'll get to that eventually, but it's not going to be the focus, the main focus is going to be AI, genetic algorithm, reinforcement learning, and then just a chess engine to resolve all the moves and output and input data in the form of PNG. I hope you're excited to start this tutorial series, and if you are, let's uh, let's begin. Let's start by creating a new, new class. We'll, I will close that window, and actually we're just going to start off by creating a new project. Uh, but first I'm going to delete this thing from the workspace, that's the the demonstration that we're going to be working towards, the final, sort of that final product. Ours is probably going to be different, uh, simplified in some areas, and uh, better in some areas. Um, so let's start creating a new project. It looks like Java 13 isn't installed on my, uh, <clears throat> I don't have the JDK on my, uh, this computer. So we'll, st we'll stick with Java 8, which is totally fine. Um, we can still use lambdas and whatnot, just not the modules, but that, that's okay. Now we're going to create the, the entry point, our entry point class. Um, I'm not exactly sure if I want to involve unit testing a lot for this project. When I was developing it, I was running so many different types of tests uh, and just verifying all my assumptions. But since I got the logic fundamentally worked out, I don't think we're going to incorporate unit testing in with this tutorial series at all. Of course, if you guys want to, it's up to you. Uh, if you guys want to post comments and just let me know if you want to see unit testing as uh, as we go through this tutorial series, um, then we can do that. Uh, but for now, let's just create our standard main method with our, our uh, main string, main, main, everything main, entry point, Java's main. Let's create a new package. Uh, we're going to be organizing this project into a lot of different packages because there's a lot of components. Essentially, there's going to be three main components. We have the genetic algorithm, 
we have the perceptron or feed forward neural network and we have the chess engine and the first part of these tutorials maybe like 0 through 20 uh, will probably just be the chess engine uh, inputting PGN exporting PGN and then printing the chessboard to the console and uh, so let's just make our chess package chess uh, chess engine package and then create some of the classes the most fundamental classes that will go into this package absolutely the most fundamental class to this thing is going to be the chess engine class it's going to contain our chess board and it's also going to contain um, our PGN history as we progress through progress through a game it's going to uh, essentially act like a game loop but we're not really going to have a game loop that updates every single however so often it's going to be event driven every time we receive a move it's going to uh, create a new set of possibilities possible moves and uh, so let's create that I'm going to start off by creating a bunch of different method stubs and class stubs essentially that just sort of outline what these things are going to, to, to do so I'm going to outline and create a bunch of stubs and talk about what each of their goals are going to be and then in a later video we're going to be implementing these stubs and you know writing what does this logic actually look like but let's first just look at these stubs and think about how everything's going to all work together in a more theoretical way rather than getting into specific implementation details and this is the first video and I don't want it to be too drawn out and too long so let's just look at what the first two stubs are going to do perform move is very important they're going to be overloaded we're going to have one that accepts a string a string as a, in a PGN notation so we can like for the first move we can type e5 enter and it'll drive a move forward and we'll be able to uh, uh, drive drive moves that way through a command line valid move this other overload version will be a way we can programmatically drive forward moves because we don't i mean i guess we could use the string one but valid move is going to have some sort of getter eventually that can uh, return itself in the form of a pgn notation um, but this provides kind of a quick and convenient way to programmatically drive moves within the chess engine I think that just about wraps up the first video, a nice introduction and demonstration of what we're working towards. I am going to be posting all of the code at the end of every tutorial to the GitHub, and you can access the code by becoming a Patreon member. Otherwise, you're just going to have to type it out. Type it out. That's, uh, that's how I learned how to program, just typing out tutorial series code. Uh, but yeah, feel free to join me on Patreon. Do get access to the GitHub uh, repository live immediately when I post an update. You'll get access to the next version of the tutorial if you want to follow along that way i understand thanks thanks for watching uh this is going to be really fun this was the my favorite project i've worked on so far i learned a lot developing this and i'm really excited to be doing this tutorial series so um, get the source code and uh i'll see you in the next video